Jesus as his reputation becomes known from town to town. And as we here are gathering physically or virtually, we too are yearning in the same way Jesus' followers did, yearning for presence and peace and help. Welcome to worship for this Sunday, March 7th, 2021, for Northminster United Church. Our Christ candle is lit to focus our hearts and minds on this time together and to, and to guide us as we seek to deepen our love for God and how we can share that more fully with the world. We also pause in a moment of gratitude, giving thanks that we live, work, worship, and play on Treaty 7 land. We continue our Lenten season of recovery, of healing, as we focus on health as essential to our spiritual lives. Those who collect beach glass often become archaeologists, seeking out any, any markings or, or clues as to the story of the original piece and what it used to be a part of. It often takes much time to bring out the truth behind it. This week, we acknowledge the power of truth-telling truth-telling as our healing property. There are stories that have shaped our lives, leaving us with the ability to see who we truly are in the eyes of God, and leaving us without the ability to, to speak the depth of our story and struggle. And so we focus on the importance of the recovery of, of mental health, of reclaiming our sense of who we are and being able to proclaim new redemptive stories of our divine worth. Let us acknowledge our need to restore, repair, renew our holy vessels, and that the health of our minds deeply affects our physical and our spiritual health. Let's pray. Centering and calming divine breath of God, you gifted us with amazing minds capable of so many things. You gave us the ability to think and, and feel, instilling us with discernment of thought and emotion. Like our physical bodies, sometimes this aspect of ourselves is under pressure, and we struggle under that strain of disappointment and despair. Too often, God, we hide this, afraid of what others might think of our difficulties in managing our moving forward, even in the face of devastating circumstances. Too often, we perpetuate the stigma of less-than-perfect state of mind, 
by being critical of ourselves and maybe others. Fear compounds this. And so many are suffering now, God, weary and grieving at the end of their rope. We cannot fathom the proportions of loss. And so we look away, sometimes even from the need in our own community. Help us, healer. Show us our capacity for compassion. Forgive our inattention. Move us to move one step at a time toward greater care for one another. In this time, I invite you to feel the warmth of God surrounding you and trust that all will be well. Believe in peace and comfort and know this, you are accepted no matter what. Accepting the truth of our difficulties is part of the journey of recovery and sharing our stories of difficulty can open the way for healing it's for you and for me and for all and so take a deep breath take that breath in and trust that this truth will fill you and breathe out with the relief of assurance Having that grace, knowing that grace, that promise, I invite you now to pass that image of warmth we've just been speaking about that surrounds you, extending it, that warmth and that grace to those who might be in close proximity with you today or beyond the walls of where you are. Imagine that extends beyond your walls to others, to the neighborhood and the wider community, to the church, and seeing that grace and that warmth spreading like the rising sun that we might expand it to all the world. Let that be our peace. Peace be with you. Let's sing.
I love stories. I love telling stories. I love listening to stories. And probably one of the most wonder-filled moments in childhood is simply that phrase, once upon a time. Do you love that? Because then something great is going to come next, right? Once upon a time. But stories don't go like this, do they? They don't go, once upon a time, there were three little pigs, the end. No, stories don't go like that, do they? That would be a really boring story because it skips the most important part. It skips the middle, doesn't it? And everyone knows that in the middle is where the dark woods are or where the the giant monsters are or where the surprising things happen or where the really hard things happen. The middle of the story is where the, the heroes come in and help fix the problem. So we really need that middle part of the story. Which reminds me, how many of you have ever had one of these? A Band-Aid, right? Just a Band-Aid. Some of you might even have one on right now. You could, maybe you have a Band-Aid on somewhere. You may have had a Band-Aid before on your knee or on your toe that you stubbed, or maybe, maybe you cut your finger when you were cooking one day, or you scratched yourself somehow, maybe your, your nose, or have you ever had one on your nose, or your elbow, or your tongue? Okay, well, maybe, maybe not your tongue. Your tongue would be a weird place for a Band-Aid. <laughs> but whatever it was, whether it was a really big scrape or a really small ouch, it always feels just a bit better to get one of these, doesn't it? And maybe that's because you're receiving love from the person who's putting the Band-Aid on for you, because that feels good. It even feels good when we can put a Band-Aid on ourselves. You know, you have an ouch and you cover it up, you go, "Ah, okay, good. It just helps that little bit that sometimes, even when we wear our Band-Aids, Sometimes we wear them way longer than we think we actually need them for, right? The, the, the cut has long since healed or the, the little bit of bleeding has stopped, but we keep wearing our Band-Aids. Why is that? I think there's a big reason why. I think it's because Band-Aids help tell a story. A Band-Aid lets everyone know who sees that Band-Aid that something has happened, and that you've got a little bit of a hurt or maybe a bigger hurt, but that that hurt didn't keep you down. There's a story there. And so the Band-Aid tells the whole world that I've been through something painful, but I have overcome it. Have you ever had someone see your bandage and ask you what happened? But then you feel a little bit proud to be able to tell the story, don't you? So stories are really important. Stories are powerful. The Bible is full of stories of God's people overcoming hard and difficult challenges. Our faith is full of stories. Our church community, what the history of Northminster is, is full of so many great stories and challenging stories. And, but those stories are what are so important. It's not just a once upon a time and the end, but it's that middle part, all of our stories that are so important. So I think for today, I just want to encourage everyone, let's keep telling our stories. Let's keep listening to the stories of others because our stories help get us through. And you know, it's been almost a whole year of not being together in person. It's been a whole year of the pandemic so far. And so I hope that this year ahead will be a year of healing and that our stories that we share in this coming year will be about us overcoming the difficult times we've had. So let's just pause in a little moment of prayer um, to end our story time. Loving God, we come to you with hearts and with hands, with minds, and with souls in need of your healing touch. Heal us from the inside out. Just take a deep breath. 
in and out. Heal us from the inside out so that we may reach out to also help heal your world. Amen. The following is the scripture for March 7th, 2021. As we share together in worship on this third Sunday of Lent, let us hear the words from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 9, verses 27 to 33. As Jesus went on from there, two blind men followed him, crying loudly, Have mercy on us, son of David. When he entered the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? They said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes and said, According to your faith, let it be done to you. And their eyes were opened. Then Jesus sternly ordered them, See that no one knows of this. But they went away and spread the news about him throughout that district. After they had gone away, a demoniac who was mute and was brought to him. And when the demon had been cast out, the one who had been made mute spoke, and the crowds were amazed and said, Never has anything like this been seen in Israel. The word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Truth-telling is healing. Stories are healing. We're hearing a lot about stories today, aren't we? And as we do that, we still have to be careful when we're telling someone else's story besides our own. You know, I even have to use a bit of caution when I reflect on on this story, and it reminds me a lot of what Barbara Brown Taylor talks about in her learning to walk in the dark because of the references and the connections we make. Um, In this story in particular, um, I have to be a little bit careful when I make reference to Jesus healing the blind, and the person who was mute, um, or like anyone who would have no voice or not be able to speak. There is something to be careful about for any of us when we reflect on such a text. If we don't tell this story well, it can cause harm to people who perhaps have the same um, condition or who in, in the same situation. In this condition or in this um, story, someone with sight or um, with, with the lack of ability to speak. This story could, if we don't share it right, perpetuate the idea that being blind or deaf is related to sin or darkness because it makes reference to 
One was in darkness and then came to know light when they were healed. And so it's just good to be careful when we share these ways that we don't connect the two. I think it would have been easier to have done that in the original context of the story. We don't tend to do that anymore, but it's still good to be aware of the connections we make between things. And it's really important we do that because we need to share this story. This story can be so liberating and it needs to be told when we're, we're talking about the idea of healing um, in this season of Lent. I think it's also important for us to look at the characters in the story in a way that acknowledges that these men in our story, these people, these characters, are not one-dimensional. There is so much more to them than just their disability, just what's visible on the outside, um, just what is challenging them. There is so much more to their story and who they are. The two men followed Jesus before they were healed. We know that. They were, they were followers of him long before this point of the story. They knew Jesus through means other than sight. They had so much more awareness and understanding of Jesus beyond than just sight. They, I think, actually had prophetic vision. They had a deeper understanding of Jesus more than others would have had at the time. And it isn't until after they're healed that they actually then go and ignore Jesus' wishes. So they were these followers, these faithful followers before, and then once they're healed, ironically, it's after that healing that they ignore what Jesus wants. He wanted them to just, you know, go on the DL, the down low, don't, don't say much, don't talk about this. But it's kind of ironic that these two men then, then go and break what Jesus wishes. But it's good they do to share the story, right? Um, that these two men can be understood as, as disciples more effectively um, after they are healed. But, but they also were devout followers before. So it's important to look at how we can be followers both in our brokenness and in our healing. The men in this story could not be silent. They had to share with their community this wondrous thing that occurred. Perhaps part of their healing actually was their being able to tell the truth, to speak. It was the truth-telling that brought them more fully into experiencing what healing was for them. That part of their healing was their being able to talk about it and to share their story. And their truth is bigger than just this one instance. This, this whole overarching healing narrative then in Matthew um, represents a bigger truth for us too. That in all of this, the truth is in Jesus, God had come to heal us. This is a story about individual healing, uh, about spiritual deliverance or uplifting, being uplifted. Our, our stories, our lives are tangled in this web of God's love and our truth and our stories, being able to share our stories, not holding them in silence. Being able to share our truth liberates us and connects us more fully to one another. It takes a lot of courage to do what they did, to speak of their healing, because when you speak of healing, it also implies there was a brokenness, there was hurt. It implies that something was wrong. It's kind of typical, isn't it, that we remain silent when we think we aren't good enough or when we don't live up to something because we are, we are broken or hurting in some way. That we remain silent when we don't understand something instead of asking questions, exploring, reaching out. So why is it that we do that? Why are the disciples even afraid of? What are they afraid of? What are we afraid of when we don't share our stories? When we don't 
comprehend something, when something doesn't make sense, or when we feel like we don't measure up, we tend to find all kinds of ways to alleviate our discomfort. We, ado- um, we avoid asking questions in a classroom or a book study because, oh, I don't want to think anyone to think I'm stupid or silly or you know, we, we tend to shy away from certain topics or we change the subject when someone's asking how we are instead of being honest. Oh, I'm fine. Oh, nice weather we're having, right? You know, like we avoid. We're, that's our human nature for some reason. Maybe even we don't say anything at all. It is a vulnerable place to be in when we think poorly of ourselves because we think that we we must, or this must have something to do with some sort of failure or incompetence. So we try and hide it or avoid it, avoid sharing. Do you know what a monologue is? It's a one voice drama or speech. It's one voice. And I think that's often the way we communicate these days. We're alone, certainly because of this pandemic and our need to isolate. And even though without the pandemic, I think we're just often afraid to tell our stories. And it's hard to be vulnerable, unfortunately. And so there's this just one voice. We keep it to ourselves. Now more than ever, this needs to change. This is the time for questions. This is the time for conversation. This is the time for hearing the truth and speaking the truth. It's the time for sharing The most meaningful moments of vulnerability should come in the midst of truth. Yet this is often when we shut down. Margaret Wheatley says, Be brave enough to start a conversation that matters. Even at coffee on Sundays, I think we're just all chipper and upbeat, but maybe there's someone in the group who just needs to be brave enough to start a conversation that matters. I like that quote. Be brave enough to start a conversation that matters. This is what was at stake for the disciples in our story today, and it's what's at stake for us as well, um, who tend just to hide too quickly that big picture of something that's um, really important to us right now or we're afraid to cover up something or we're afraid to uh, we're afraid we cover up something because we're afraid to share or we have a problem to solve and we just look for a quick fix rather than that faith deep seeking out the possibilities together not just alone I've said this already, starting a conversation takes courage, and you do not know where that conversation will end up, and you might not even like the results at first, but the conversation may actually reveal what you stand for, who you are. Um, It may reveal your very truth. But not just you. I think that conversation will also help others know that they too are not alone on that important matter. Every week of healing, we've been talking about a different aspect of healing, and today's theme is all about our mental health and and sharing our stories. Some of us, a lot of us, have the experience of pain and brokenness relating to others telling our story others talking about us or sharing the story that's just our own. And that happens, when that happens, it it can sort of create this persona that is not us when someone else speaks for us. And so that that perhaps leaves us without the ability to see who we truly are in God's eyes when we're not able to speak for ourselves. And so our being able to to reclaim our sense of who we are, being able to to see and hear anew, and then being able to, to reclaim and proclaim our own healing stories, our own redemptive stories, that we have divine worth, that we are God's beloved, being able to be the one to tell our own stories is just that very important part 
of healing our minds and our spirits. Two main themes, I think, emerged when I was looking at um, ideas for this week and doing some reflection on it, uh, especially by people who, who want to, or who it's their, their background, their profession in addressing mental health. They over and over again say that, that people find new freedom when they share their stories. And it is so important to change the stigma around mental health so that more people will, will seek help and embrace the truth. So those are the two things over and over again. It's important to share our own stories and it's important that we work to eliminate the stigma around mental health so that people can find relief. And so what an important message that is, not just for individuals, but also for us, uh, for, for that message to be conveyed to the church. The statistics show in every congregation that someone, no, actually several people, will be dealing with some form of mental illness. And, and I've said this before too, so many people I know say, oh, I'm not good enough to go to church right now. I'm not well enough to go to church right now. I'm not in the right space. That they feel like there has to be some sort of perfection before they can be in a faith community. But, but the reality is we all have our own brokenness. We all come with our own issues. There are so many that are dealing with, with mental health concerns. And so that storytelling is ever so much more important so that people know they're not alone. And even more true in the pandemic, right? That when there's this time of unrest that I, I know people are experiencing more anxiety and depression and health issues than they ever have before because of our isolation right now. So we need to keep telling that story. Last week, there was the centurion, the Roman centurion, not one of Jewish faith like Jesus, who crossed boundaries and reached out to Jesus, and Jesus crossed boundaries and reached back and offered healing. That same boldness of the centurion asking Jesus for help can be seen for us today again as an inspiration to be bold in voicing our experience as the church, as we promise and as we commit to being, remaining, continuing to be a compassionate, non-judgmental, safe space in response to those who are open and honest and ask for help. So what can we do as Northminster, as a worshiping community, a faith community, to be that kind of community that is that compassionate, non-judgmental, safe space to share our stories? The heart of the matter, I think, turns on how secure we are in our life and how confident we are in God's grace. Maybe it comes down to trusting in God, remembering, believing that God loves us. And if, and if God loves us so much, how can we not share our story? Because when we can let go of our fears and what our, whatever it is that's holding us back. And when we can let go in confidence and trust, so much more is suddenly available to us, including maybe especially the gift of holy wonder and being more fully whole. Let's sing.
As we move into our time of prayer for this Sunday morning, please um, share your prayers of concern, prayers for yourself or someone you know, a situation in the world, prayers of thanks or concern, just whatever is on your heart. Um, please do share this morning. Let's pray. Healer of our every ill, especially our stigmatizing or fear of mental illness, we come before you in this time with this on our hearts to make our prayers known. Hear our cries, God, for healing of body, mind, and spirit. We know that already you are at work among us, showing us the way to recovery from the toxicities and grief of our time. You have blessed each one of us as beloved. We give you thanks that your mercy is wide and your faithfulness to us does not ever depend upon having our feelings sorted out or our sense of well-being secure. You are not waiting for us to get our act together before offering us your love and grace. We pray especially this morning for those who have experienced heightened and acute mental and emotional difficulties as a result of this past year of isolation and fear. We pray for those who feel far from hope. We mourn those who could not find a lifeline to survive this hardship. We pray for those who find themselves without access to adequate care or someone to talk to or appropriate resources to steady their hearts and minds. We give thanks for those who are telling their story, showing us how to open our hearts to help others and offering ripples of healing in the community. We pray grateful thanks for progress towards holistic health care and the effort of all who are working to destigmatize mental illness, making it easier to ask for and get the help that is so desperately needed. We ask God for courage and encouragement to reevaluate how we as a church can help now and into the future. In our prayers this morning, uh, Marcy is lifting up a prayer for the women around the world on International Women's Day, which is tomorrow. May we not forget the missing Indigenous women. May there be freedom of choice and life for all our sisters in the world. Thank you, Marcy, for those words. Continued prayers for, uh, for the healing of Jean Carter after her fall. Um, prayers from Suzanne for gratefulness that Nicole is doing well and continues to be healthy in this pandemic. Prayers um, from Vona. Vona's lifting up a prayer for a woman who's just moved into her building without hardly anything. I'll offer a prayer this morning as well for Gladys, who is in hospital waiting for some tests um, this weekend or early next week. We hold Gladys in prayer. As prayers continue to come in, please do lift them. Please share them. Hold them in your hearts. Let's now say together, um, as we join our voices in the Lord's Prayer, uh, as we lift together prayers spoken and prayers held in silence, let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So the words we heard this week of healing, of this week's uh, healing story were, do you believe I am able to do this? Do you remember those words in the, in the scripture this morning? Jesus' question invites us to consider our own belief in transformation. He invites us to step into a a renewed vision for our lives, to speak into a new story, not to be bound up in the stories of the past that have been inscribed to us by others that may even be um, oppressing or that might limit us, but to, to go forward. Um, throughout our season of Lent, we are using the image of beach glass. A lot of you have picked up beach glass at the church or have your own. If you don't have some yet, please um, reach out to the office during office hours, stop by the church, or we can deliver to make sure you have some of your own beach glass. Because we, we'd like to do this ritual every week, and it's just, it's nice. It's a reminder for us to have of um, the spiritual journey for Lent. So last week, we took our bo a bowl and we put our beach glass in the bowl. And beach glass, as you can see, is usually quite cloudy and, uh, when it's dry. It's quite dull looking even when it's dry. But when it comes into contact with water, it becomes quite bright and clear. You, I'll show you a little bit here. You can see on the camera, it does change. Look, at it, it sort of brightens up the glass. And so I'm going to invite you to do that today, that um, if you still have your glass in a bowl or some sort of vessel that you take a moment and to pour some water on it with, with anything, just run it under the tap quickly. And, and as you do, um, let that water pouring over your beach glass be a prayer for clarity. That as this happens, as you see this glass transform a little bit, that maybe it's a prayer for you to ask for um, a new way, some clarity of how you're understanding the struggles that you might be experiencing. And as you start to see your glass pieces become more bright and more clear, just ask the Spirit to live and move and transform you and others who need that clarity for life. This is our offering time in worship where we pause and where we think about all we are blessed with. And in response, we respond in gratitude, giving thanks to God for all our blessings and giving a portion back to God. It's a moment as well that I get to say thank you for the ways you continue to show your generosity, the ways you give of your offering, whether it's dropping it off at the church or, or mailing it or, or giving it through PAR or tithely, how you give to both Northminster and to the Mission and Service Fund of the United Church. Let's now pause and pray to bless these gifts. Holy God, for the gift of those who walk this path alongside us, for the way in which these offerings will become our presence with others, for the gift of this community bound and working together, we give thanks. Bless our gifts, God, as symbols of our gratitude and hope for our future in your hands. Amen. A few announcements to draw our worship time to a close. 
please again take time to read the many announcements that are in your Friday email. Share some of those announcements. Invite others to also experience worship and the many other things happening at Northminster. Your invitation makes a difference. Even if you're on social media, hit that share button and share some of our quotes or our um, our opportunities, our events coming up. Thank you for sharing the good news of Northminster with others. Um, just a few announcements. Again, we always have coffee after church every Sunday on Zoom. It's the same link every week. If you don't have the link or need it again, don't hesitate to text or email or reach out to me. Um, and we'll have coffee between 1130 and 12 right after worship. March 13th, that's next Saturday, a very important event happening for youth in our congregation around healthy relationships and the idea of consent and how important consent is. So grade six and up, those in our youth program, our kids' own program who are grade six and up, any of your friends or family or neighbors in that age group that aren't part of Northminster but would like to participate, participate, please attend. Let Marianne know. It's going to be led by Tara Jorgensen, who is an education, um, an educator who specializes in consent and in bystander intervention. Very highly trained. She'll engage our kids um, in really interesting, interactive ways. So plan to attend if you're in grade six and up. Um, for next Saturday, I think it's at 6.30, but you've got the information on your screen. Kid Zone happens in the life of Northminster. We have worship and we continue to nurture our children and youth um, in their own age programming. There's three age groups that our kids can attend, just depending on their age and interest level. So make note of all that information so our volunteers and, and staff um, can get to know your kids again and connect with, um, with, with interesting programs. We've, we've taken time to prepare for them. And our Easter play, we are so excited to offer this Easter play um, on April 4th. It's going to be so much fun. Traditionally, you'll associate plays with our children and youth, but we need a lot of adult participation for this one. So if you're interested in, in having a simple part and can record on Zoom, likely March 27th, we will be recording on Zoom. Reach out to me. I would love to have your participation with us. Let's now have our, our blessing to end our time. Go now with the, the confidence, the trust, that the one who is living water is already cleansing, renewing, and clarifying, clarifying our lives. God is recovering our depth of love for all and our joy of living in this world. May the words of Jesus ring true in your ears. Do you believe it is possible? And may the Spirit hover, move, and deliver salve to your soul and a spring in your step. Amen. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy singing our theme song again and then a video from the Naked Faith Band with Grace and Zach. And um, their words are so fitting for today. Enjoy. Bye for now.
I've been lost before I've taken a few too many Left turns I've been full of doubt Self-hatred that all familiar Real chance I'm looking for a sign A guide to give me hope Something to tell me Which way to go And yet We do not lose heart Someone to tell me 